What's up? To explain the pathogenesis of Cutanea tarda porphyria, we have to recall heme biosynthesis. Recall that all blood cells in our body come from the stem cell. For example, to produce matured blood cell, stem cell undergo differentiation into common myeloid progenitor cell, then progenitor cell become erythroblast, and erythroblast mature initially into a reticulocyte, and then into a erythrocyte, or we call such cell a red blood cell. And the process of heme synthesis occurs on a stage of erythroblast. So when we are talking about heme synthesis, we mean erythroblast. Here we have mitochondria and the cytosol of erythroblast. The process of heme synthesis begins in the mitochondria of erythroblast, where glycine reacts with succinyl CoA with formation of delta amino levulenic acid, so called ALA. The most important feature is that this reaction is catalyzed by the specific enzyme called ALA synthase, and ALA synthase uses as cofactor vitamin B6 so-called pyridoxal phosphate. ALA then moves to the cytoplasm, where it undergo conversion by ALA dehydrase into porphobilinogen. Then porphobilinogen by porphobilinogen deaminase is converted into hydroxymethyl B lane. Hydroxymethyl B lane is converted into uroporphyrinogen, and uroporphyrinogen by uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase undergo conversion into coproporphyrinogen. This molecule enters into the mitochondria, where it undergo conversion into protoporphyrin, and then the specific enzyme called ferrocalatase that use copper as cofactor binds iron to protoporphyrin, and this results in formation of heme. Then we bind heme to globin, and by this we produce hemoglobin. And then fully matured blood cells with hemoglobin will enter into the circulation. But some genetic mutations can disrupt this pathway. And one of such genetic mutations causes deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. As a result, a condition known as cutanea tarda porphyria develops. The problem here is that if there will be no uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, then we cannot produce coproporphyrinogen. But also, this causes accumulation of uroporphyrinogen. Initially, uroporphyrinogens will be progressively accumulating inside the erythroblast, but then, with destruction of erythroblast, they will be released into the plasma. The problem is that porphyrins are highly reactive substances, and while they are in the plasma, light exposure can give them energy, or we can say, light can excite them, and in excited state, porphyrins become very unstable. They do not like to be excited, so they tend to return to their initial state, and in order to do this, they need to get rid of this additional energy. You know, the first molecule that they usually see is oxygen. When they see oxygen, they do not think twice. They immediately give this additional energy to oxygen and come back to their initial state. But now with this additional energy, normal oxygen is transformed into excited state. And oxygen in excited state we call singlet oxygen. Singlet oxygen is quite a dangerous substance. It can easily oxidize lipids or proteins. And the most vulnerable structure that is composed of lipids and proteins is the cellular membrane. Recall that the cellular membrane of any cell in human organism is composed of lipid B layer and membrane proteins. So once singlet oxygen is formed, it causes peroxidation of the cellular membrane, and damage to the cellular membrane irreversibly leads to a cellular death. Because it's light that triggers this entire process of cellular death, the most vulnerable cells are epitheliocytes that cover the skin on most sun-exposed parts of the body. Most commonly, it's back of the hands, forearm, neck, face, and feet. On skin, this damage to epithelial cells markedly increases the fragility of the skin and manifests typically as blisters and vesicles. Because skin becomes extremely fragile, even minor trauma can cause formation of a wound that easily gets infected. And such repeated damage to the skin causes massive formation of scars. Scars can be hyperpigmentated or hypopigmentated. 
So the skin in patients with porphyria have blisters and vesicles in combination with hyperpigmentated areas that are caused by excessive scarring. Also, we can excrete uroporphyrin with the urine, and increasing amount of uroporphyrin in the urine gives urine a tea color. Typically, porphyria is inherited, but also in some rare cases it can be acquired in patients with hepatitis C, for example. Also, the most common factor that causes exacerbation of porphyria is alcohol consumption. Because alcohol stimulates allosynthase, as a result the production of allo increase, and eventually this will cause increase in production of uroporphyrinogen. And because uroporphyrinogen cannot be converted further due to a genetic defect, it will cause accumulation of uroporphyrinogen in the organism. More uroporphyrinogen, more singlet oxygen production, more oxidative damage, thereby more severe will be the clinical symptoms, and also the high will be the excretion of uroporphyrinogen into the urine. The major recommendation to the patients is sun avoidance. Obviously, with decrease in light exposure, the production of singlet oxygen decreases, and with decrease in singlet oxygen, potentially oxidative damage will decrease and thereby the severity of clinical symptoms will decrease. The treatment options include phlebotomy. The idea here is that by removing blood with high oroporphyrinogen concentration and by substituting blood with fluid, we decrease the concentration of oroporphyrinogen in the blood. As a result, the clinical manifestations will decrease and the excretion of oroporphyrinogen with the urine will decrease. And also we can use antimalarial drugs as hydroxychloroquine. The concept is that hydroxychloroquine inhibits allosynthase. As a result, the production of allo decreases, and with decrease in allo, the production of uroporphyrinogen will decrease. And also, hydroxychloroquine increases the excretion rate of uroporphyrin. As a result, the amount of uroporphyrin in the blood decreases. So by these two mechanisms, hydroxychloroquine can decrease the concentration of uroporphyrin in the blood, and by this it prevents potential formation of singlet oxygen and further oxidative damage. Great. Fine. Yep. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 